Once you're living under a rock, you know that AI is not just the future, it's the present. From the code you write to the content you consume, AI models are changing everything. And at the heart of this revolution is a new critical role, the AI engineer. But let's be honest, the path to becoming an AI engineer can seem incredibly complex. Do you need a PhD? Do you need to be a math genius? What do you actually need to know? If you are new here, I am Priyanka Vergadia, a cloud and AI expert with 15 plus years at big tech companies. And on this channel, I talk about careers and tools in tech. Let me put your mind at ease right away. You don't need a PhD to become an AI engineer. So what do you need? Now in this video, I'm going to break down everything and give you the ultimate roadmap to prepare for an AI engineering job fast. Our guide would be this AI engineering book plus a few killer courses that I will share at the end of this video. Want to skip to the two best courses? I get it. You can get to them via the chapters below, but here's the thing. Knowing what to learn matters more than how fast you learn it. So stick around or you'll waste months on tutorials that won't get you hired. So now, before we build your roadmap, let's first define this role. What makes an AI engineer an AI engineer? It boils down to answering some critical questions that split into strategy and technical execution. What are these questions? Well, should I even build this? How do I evaluate my application? What causes hallucinations and how do I detect and mitigate them? This is where RAG comes in. What are the best practices for prompt engineering? Why does RAG work and what are the strategies for using it? What's an agent? How do I build one and evaluate one? When should I fine tune a model and when should I not? How do I make my model faster, cheaper, more secure? How do I create a feedback loop or how do I improve my applications and model? The blueprint, the planning and evaluation. Now, before you write a single line of code, you need a plan. Every great AI application starts with a simple question. Should I even build this? You should build an AI application if it addresses a real tangible need and you have a clear way to measure its success. Don't just build a cool demo. There are lots of those out there. Think about the why. For example, building a chatbot that tells jokes. It's fun, but building a chatbot that helps e-commerce customers track their packages, solve a real business problem and reduce support tickets. That's a strong reason to build. This is your ROI, your return on investment for a business use case. Okay, so you have decided that your idea is solid. Now for the most critical step, which brings us to our next big question, how do I evaluate my application? You evaluate your app by setting clear, measurable goals before you start. This is called evaluation-driven development. It means tying the AI's performance to a real-world outcome. For a customer support chatbot, a model metric is factual consistency. Is it giving the correct information? But the business metric is customer satisfaction or number of support tickets resolved. You need to know how improving the model's accuracy actually helps your users and your business. This leads to a fascinating follow-up. Can I use AI to evaluate AI outputs? Well, the answer is a resounding yes, right? This is the cutting edge technique called AI as a judge. You can use a powerful model like GPT-4 to act as an impartial evaluator for another model's work. You provide it with the original request and the generated answer, along with the detailed scoring rubric. For instance, you can ask it, on a scale of one to five, how helpful is this answer? This allows you to automate evaluation in a scalable way. Now we get to the heart of AI engineering, ensuring your model provides high quality, reliable answers. Now this brings us to the biggest boogeyman in AI. 
what causes hallucinations and how do I detect and mitigate them? Well, hallucinations happen when an AI confidently states something that is completely false. This is because models are probabilistic word predictors, not factual databases. If they haven't been trained on specific factual data, they will essentially guess the most plausible sounding sequence of words, which can be wrong. To detect hallucinations, you have to verify the output against a trusted source of information. To mitigate them, our best tool is Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG. Now we will dive deep into that in a moment. You can also give the model explicit instructions in the prompt, like only answer based on the provided document. If the answer is not in the document, then just say, I don't know. To get these high quality responses, you need to master the art of communication with AI. So what are the best practices for prompt engineering? Well, the book here outlines many, but they boil down to a few key principles. The first one is be incredibly specific and provide context. Don't just say write a poem. Say write a four stanza poem in the style of Edgar Allan Poe and about a lost cat. Now, second could be provide examples, a technique called few short prompting. Show the model exactly what you want. And third is break down the complex tasks into a sequence of simpler prompts, which means make sure you always have a role, audience, and a task in your prompt. Now, let's circle back to our best weapon against hallucination. You'll often hear the term RAG, but why does RAG work and what are the strategies for using it? Well, RAG works because it grounds the model in reality. It's an open book exam for AI. Before generating an answer, the system retrieves factual, up-to-date information from a trusted source. This source becomes part of the context the model is then instructed to answer the user's query based only on this retrieved information. Key strategies include choosing the right data to retrieve from, whether that's your company's knowledge base, specific set of PDFs, or the live internet, and using efficient search techniques like vector search to find the most relevant information, advanced techniques and production readiness. Now, once you've mastered prompts and RAG, you're ready to go to the next level. Let's start with a very exciting concept. What's an agent and how do I build and evaluate one? Well, simply put, an agent is an AI that can perform actions to achieve a specific goal. It uses tools, which can be anything from a calculator to a web search API or even an email client. You build an agent by giving it a mission and a toolbox. You evaluate it based on a simple metric. Did it succeed in completing the mission? For example, an agent's mission could be to find the best three Italian restaurants near me and then make a reservation for the top one at 7 p.m. Now, there are times when even RAG and agents aren't enough to get the specific behavior that you need. This brings us to a crucial decision point. When should I fine tune a model and when should I not? Now, fine tuning means training a model a little bit more on your own custom data set. You should only consider it when you need to teach the model a very specific style, format or behavior that is difficult to specify in a prompt. For example, teaching a model to write in a unique brand voice of your company. You should not fine tune a model just to teach it new facts. That's what RAG is for. Fine tuning is for behavior. RAG is for knowledge. If you do decide to fine tune, you will ask yourself, how much data do I need and how do I validate its quality? Well, the amount depends on the task's complexity, but for many tasks, even a few hundred high quality examples can make a big difference. You validate your data by ensuring it's accurate, consistent, and covers a diverse range of scenarios your app will face. Manual review of a sample is essential to catch these errors. 
Now, as your app gets ready for users, you need to ask, how do I make my model faster, cheaper, and more secure? You can make your models faster and cheaper by using smaller, optimized models and using techniques like quantization, which is like making the model's brain work with smaller numbers. For security, you must implement guardrails. These are the checks on both the user's input and the model's output to block harmful content and prevent misuse. Now, finally, to ensure that your application improves over time, you need to answer, how do I create a feedback loop? Well, a feedback loop is a system for collecting users' interactions and using them as data to make your model better. This can be explicit, like thumbs up or thumbs down, or implicit, like tracking which of the two AI-generated drafts a user chooses to keep. This data is fuel for your next round of fine-tuning, making your application smarter with every user interaction. Now, the action plan, the hands-on learning path. That was a lot of what it means to be an AI engineer in action, the foundations. Now, how do you put it all into practice? To go from understanding these concepts to actually building with them, you need a structured, hands-on learning path. That's why I'm so excited to recommend the Data Camp Associate AI Engineer for Developers Career Track. I've personally reviewed this track and it aligns perfectly with practical application-focused approach that we've discussed today. You will start with the fundamentals and then dive into the hands-on projects, learning how to use the OpenAI API, building applications with Langchain, and implement RAG systems. It's the perfect way to apply the knowledge from the book in a practical way. And once you've built these skills, you need a way to prove them to potential employers. And for that, I recommend AI Engineer for Developers Associate Certification. Now, passing this certification shows that you don't just know the buzzwords, you have the practical skills to build, debug, and deploy real-world AI applications. It's a powerful way to gain those hands-on skills. So there you have it the path to becoming a self-taught AI engineer fast. It's about understanding the core principles of building applications and foundation models. It's about a systematic process of planning, evaluating, prompt engineering, using RAG, and knowing when to use advanced techniques like agents and fine tuning. I've put links to everything that we've discussed today in the description below, the AI engineering book, the data camp track and certification, and Gen AI System Design Interviews book. If this video helped you, let me know by adding a comment below. I read pretty much every single comment. I also have a few more tips on AI engineering in the video here. Thanks for watching and keep on building.